You are on Strat News Global. I am Nitin Gokhale. Wednesday marks a significant milestone in the Indian Armed Forces acquisition history because the Cabinet Committee on Security has cleared two important acquisitions of two platforms for the Indian Navy in particular, but also for the Indian Army and the Indian Air Force, which will enhance the combat effectiveness or combat capability of the three armed forces for future, current and future needs uh, with increasing uh, aggression from China. These are the platforms that were needed. And to discuss the uh, importance of uh, the, this decision as well as what these platforms bring to the table, I have with me Vice Admiral Satish Ghormade, former Vice Chief of the Indian Navy, now a consultant and a, a strategic thinker. Thank you very much for your time, Admiral Gormade, for uh, coming here and uh, now deciding to speak with us. Thank you, Nitin. Thank you. for I, It's a proud privilege to be here. Thank you. So, uh, the Cabinet Committee on Security, as we know, on Wednesday has cleared uh, the acquisition of uh, the MQ-9B Predators to be sourced from General Atomics, the US company. Uh, and, of course, two uh, nuclear-propelled attack submarines, yeah. which we will, uh, uh, you know, sort of, I'll ask you to explain to our viewers what, what do they mean. But let me start with uh, the predators and their importance. Because uh, the Indian Navy, when you were vice chief, uh, was also operating yes. an MQ-9, I yeah. think, uh, for correct. surveillance. Yes. Uh, so what has been the experience of the Indian Navy and what do these machines bring to the table? Uh, firstly, these predators, or uh, sea guardians, mm -hmm. are really a great or huge capability. Mm -hmm. It gives a huge capability on surveillance, mm -hmm. firstly on the vast maritime area which we have. Our primary area of operations for the Indian Navy uh, are, uh, extend from the east coast of Africa, Persian Gulf, sure. and up to South China Sea. Right. And mm. uh, down below up to Australia. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this is a vast and huge area to mm. keep this under surveillance where almost one lakh ships move daily. <laughs> All the, combat uh, as well combat as civilian. Uh, merchant mm. ships. Merchant and ships. therefore, mm. this amount of traffic to mm. monitor and this amount of area to monitor, mm. you require uh, capability. Right. This uh, capability provides an endurance of 36 hours mm -hmm. and height of 30 to 40,000 and it gives you accuracy of uh, positioning mm -hmm. and uh, the maritime domain awareness sure. which really helps our uh, build our picture and mm -hmm. be aware of what's happening in our area. So the maritime domain awareness becomes clearer. Exactly. Uh, also, uh, for the Indian Navy, perhaps this also saves or optimizes uh, the cost effectiveness of the platform uh, that you use for surveillance. Because earlier you would have been sending ships, I suppose, to these areas, southern exactly. Indian Ocean to South China Sea. Otherwise. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we have mission-based deployments, mm -hmm. which uh, was started in 2018, mm -hmm. where we deployed a ship each in various choke points or areas. Mm -hmm. But these sustain and that area of operation would positively be limited and comparatively much more expensive, like you brought out. So mm -hmm. much co cost-effective option. Mm -hmm. And even deploying our PHI uh, aircraft mm -hmm. uh, requires uh, the, uh, the cost is much more than deploying. And, a and also, if I'm not mistaken, and please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that PHIs are primarily anti-submarine weapons. Exactly. I mean, uh, platforms. Anti-submarine platform. Anti Main mm -hmm. role is MRASW. Mm -hmm. And therefore, their major role is for anti-submarine warfare. Mm -hmm. They are used in surveillance in addition, actually. <laughs> exactly. So, I think here you <laughs> yeah. are using them for primarily for surveillance, for surveillance most of the time. Because of the lack of uh, capability. Which, so, that which means it fulfilled. fills the gap now. Exactly. This, this fills this the gap. Really and these numbers are adequate, the 15 for yes. the Indian Navy? Yes. If India 15 are adequate to mm. meet our uh, present day requirement mm -hmm. and to requirement till we build our own capability. Okay. And I think the whole purpose would be to build an, our indigenous capability. Mm -hmm. And it meets the requirement of the Army and Air Force, eight each for the uh, huge uh, land borders, which we also yeah. need surveillance. So they, they, they are called sky guardians. If, uh, exactly. Those two, those eight, are eight each which eight will each come. Will come right. Right. That right. And uh, so uh, just explain to us the uh, importance of having this high altitude, long endurance, uh, or hail mm. uh, UAVs or uh, predators as they are called uh, uh, for the operational uh, requirements of the armed forces. Uh, so let's take the Navy for instance. You mentioned surveillance, vast area of surveillance. That's right. 
but uh, predators also are they are called predators because they also have uh, armed capability armed capability and what That's are right. those uh, capabilities that they would have no they have they are able to carry uh, uh, the weapons mm -hmm. of armament and in, in addition of course eo ir surveillance mm -hmm. which, which helps them right? eo is electronic Electro, uh, electro optical and, and IR infrared, is infrared. infrared. Okay. infrared. Mm -hmm. So therefore, these capabilities actually add to this thing. And locating and then pinpointing. Once you pinpoint, then you can launch uh, a missile accordingly. Which is on board. Which is on board. Which is That's on board. right. Okay. Correct. So it's almost like an aircraft. It's almost it's like a fighter aircraft. aircraft. It is a fighter Except aircraft. Except that it's not a manned aircraft. It's not manned. And it's got un, uh, uh, endurance which is much more <laughs> than, an aircraft. <laughs> than an aircraft. Okay. <laughs> So and also, it helps that uh, you don't lose a man in case. That sure, but it's a it's, it's a, a hugely great, expensive, uh, expensive uh, machine uh, also because from what I read in the papers that uh, it's going to be costing India nearly twenty eight thousand crores or That's three point right. three billion dollars. Exactly. Um, but it's worth it, right? It is worth it. It mm -hmm. is worth it because of the capability required, because mm -hmm. of the operations which we require, mm -hmm. and we are aware of what is happening in the world around at mm -hmm. present. Mm -hmm. The situation in West Asia is uh, deteriorating badly mm -hmm. is continuously there's Russia Ukraine going on something in China, South China Sea is brewing up and at this time if Indian Navy or India was particularly must have this capability mm -hmm. so that it deters anyone else to uh, do anything wrong in our area right like and in any case Indian Ocean is India's backyard, backyard. India's primary exactly. responsibility exactly also um, one of the things that comes out from uh, this discussions and uh, literature that one uh, reads is that uh, the uh, three uh, other quad countries where India is a member yeah. also have these uh, predators. Exactly. So, which will bring in uh, very smooth interoperability. Uh, that's very important. Mm -hmm. We will actually the uh, deal of this particular uh, approval also mm -hmm. looks for a global maritime MRO, mm -hmm. which will be um, uh, maintenance and repair. Uh, and overall mm -hmm. uh, center to be set up here. So, uh, the aim would be to create an MRO hub mm -hmm. in India, okay. where we could uh, service, maintain the, uh, the predators and this will help that all the uh, countries, like-minded countries who are going to operate these, we can also operate in this part of the region. And it will actually help the Americans themselves mm -hmm. to operate their, uh, uh, to service uh, their uh, their uh, predators, predators uh, which are particular. deployed here. And that brings in uh, firstly uh, uh, more so in sense of indigenization. Mm -hmm. uh, we have more people being employed in this mm -hmm. and they learn about this and uh, future in future it will help us to create our own capability. And an ecosystem and uh, an of ecosystem. tier 1, tier 2. Exactly. Uh, uh, it will create MRO a complete MRO. That's right. That's right. That, yeah. And uh, there is likely to be from what I hear is that there is going to be a separate uh, MOU with DR RDO for the further development where the General Atomics Company will provide expertise exactly. and consultancy exactly. uh, to DRDO. Yes. That would mean that if DRDO wants to, in uh, conjunction with private companies, uh, wants to develop, uh, let us say uh, again hail, uh, the high altitude long endurance uh, in India, yeah. this will come in handy? Yes, very much, very mm -hmm. much. And this is part of the offset obligation. Uh -huh. in this particular case okay. and in this case there will be the whole I think the uh, discussions have gone on for a long time <laughs> Correct. to get this particular uh, <laughs> transfer of technology or uh, which expertise which we will get through Right. and I think uh, DRDO mm -hmm. along with a private agency mm -hmm. uh, come in, uh, uh, synchronization and in working together I sure. think we will be able to uh, build this capability. I am sure about that so I think that's one good decision after yeah. almost uh, six years of tortured negotiation, <laughs> yeah, exactly. if I may call it. Yeah. Uh, six or eight, I don't know. Yeah, but, uh, but it's a great decision. To my memory, say. it's about six to eight years. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure uh, you've seen through yes, yes. very closely <laughs> what, what was happening in uh, this when you were in the chair that's, of vice, uh, vice chief. Yes. But let me move on to uh, the other decision or the other approval that has come in. It's to build, to begin with, two uh, what they call SSN. So, if you can explain what SSN means to our viewers, so that it's easier to then discuss uh, what they will yeah. bring to the Indian Navy. Yeah, this uh, submarines are nuclear powered submarines. Mm -hmm. The propulsion is nuclear, right. but they carry conventional missiles. Okay. And so mm -hmm. this actually gives the submarine uh, unlimited endurance, mm -hmm. uh, only limited by the machinery, mm -hmm. uh, the fatigue of the crew, mm -hmm. or rations. Ah. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, the rest part is looked after, so unlimited, and and they are attack weapons actually. It's an offensive platform mm -hmm. which has uh, speeds mm -hmm. of much higher than a conventional uh, boat, okay. and it can uh, which are diesel powered mostly, which are diesel powered, yeah. and run on batteries, batteries. underwater. Right. So therefore, they need to be charged. Mm -hmm. Here, there is no charging required, mm -hmm. and therefore, this uh, gives it that unlimited endurance and capability, mm -hmm. and also to attack enemy fleet formations. It also prevents, it goes into, uh, covers a large area and major role of sea denial, mm -hmm. uh, a presence so of an SSN. They are, uh, they are agile. They, they are, are much, more agile. much more agile. Much more agile. Right. Agile, mm -hmm. underwater. And silent. Uh, and silent. Okay. That's right. Because of the nuclear propulsion. Nuclear propulsion. That's uh -huh. right. And India has quite mastered the uh, nuclear reactor on board uh, submarines. Uh, yes. Going by what has happened with the SSBN program, which is the nuclear powered nuclear armed submarines which are mostly deterrence uh, value. That's correct. But in this case, uh, now this will be built in India uh, yes. clearly to the yes. two uh, SSNs. And uh, do you think here the indigenization will be almost over 90 percent? Yes, yes. A very high level of indigenization has been achieved mm -hmm. by this because in the AT, uh, the program of uh, SSBNs, mm -hmm. we, the Arigat, which was the second one, right. were commissioned in August. Mm -hmm. That itself uh, demonstrated our capability mm -hmm. to build a submarine. And over the period from Arihant to Arigat, uh, we have reached a very high level of indigenization mm -hmm. and in all aspects in right. this particular. And this will help us build mm -hmm. the SSNs much faster. Uh, in a, uh, in indigenously and a large amount of industry has developed uh, the MSMEs mm -hmm. etc who have developed all the systems of mm -hmm. this. So they uh, generally SSNs will become part of your operational fleets, yes. western and eastern fleets. That's correct. Uh, and they can be sort of uh, working together with uh, the aircraft carrier and the other ships. Yeah. Uh, As a role of SSN, mm -hmm. firstly one is to attack Right. They do. In addition, they provide protection to the uh, fleet formations. Right. So, in uh, the ASW protection also. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, they will be ahead of, uh, they will, uh, they normally go ahead of the carrier formations mm -hmm. and clear up the area ah, and uh, okay. provide uh, protection to the. Uh, so, so far, India didn't have SSN. They were two leased boats we from had Russia. Leased, yeah. Leased and boats. we have operated them mm -hmm. in a manner. They were so called INS Chakra. Chakra. Mm -hmm. Chakra 1 and the 2. Chakra, then uh, repeat. Chakra, chakra 2. Yeah. And we will also be getting one more. From the Russians. In the yeah. uh, next 2 to 3 years. Okay. So but that is not enough. That is not enough mm -hmm. actually and that is why this whole process uh, was going on for a long time mm -hmm. and I am glad that this approval has come. Finally it has Finally come. come. They are saying it is for two but I am yeah. sure uh, going forward they will uh, look for it four will more. Be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Actually the uh, vast area which we require, we need this mm -hmm. capability mm -hmm. and considering the uh, threats which are emerging in our area in Indian Ocean, I think we need this capability to deter oh. any misadventure by anyone else. Right. So finally, as, as I see it, um, the 30-year nuclear, as uh, uh, the submarine Sub plan, plan, which was in, the, uh, I think, 90, at the turn of the century, yeah, okay, 1998, <laughs> 25 years, yes. almost 26 years 26 now. Years now. Uh, it's finally, something has moved on that. Uh, exactly. Because uh, I'm sure the older submarines are being phased out, they yes. will be phased out. That's correct. So, uh, typically, uh, when the submarines are built, like, uh, I mean, I think the Kalavari class, uh, which is Scorpion uh, yeah. in Mazgaon docks, they were built. It has taken a long time, but yeah. now I think we are fully uh, six submarines six have already come. Exactly. Uh, so these will only add to the uh, punch, punch that very the Indian true. Navy has. Yes, okay. it will. And it is a very, very important capability actually which we have, mm -hmm. a potent capability mm -hmm. which is essential for a maritime <laughs> nation like India. Like India, which has uh, vast, vast responsibilities, responsibilities also, I suppose. That's and uh, now, let me finally end here by uh, asking you about the contest in the Indian Ocean region. The Chinese are known to be making increasing forays into Indian Ocean region. So, uh, in that sense, uh, if India has to protect its backyard or its area of influence, the Navy plays a major role. Yes. And how do you foresee the Indian Navy going forward with all these acquisitions and uh, further plan? You, you think the Indian Navy also needs to expand a bit uh, in terms of manpower, in terms of technical uh, expertise? Uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, Indian Navy is a growing service mm -hmm. and must grow much more. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a service which requires, because Indian Navy is seen as the uh, force which brings peace and stability in the Indian Ocean region. 
sure. and for the complete and not only for our economy, mm -hmm. which is very important for this at this time when India is a cusp of becoming the third, has become the third largest economy and mm -hmm. will continue moving ahead right. uh, in particular this. And for this, I think uh, to Indian Navy being the guarantor of peace and uh, stability mm -hmm. uh, requires to grow much more. And True. for that, I think this capability building uh, mm -hmm. which is happening mm -hmm. must continue. And in, uh, just utilizing the uh, plans to and taking decisions in time, mm -hmm. I think that will help Indian Navy to grow uh, with the amount of this. So that's some good news on that, yeah. uh, on the Shera Eve. Yes. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Admiral Gormade, for giving your giving us your time and your insights. Uh, you were at the helm of you know all this, so you know it firsthand, and therefore it was important to get your views on uh, what this decision means for India and for the Indian Armed Forces. Thank you very much for this time. Thank you very much. I, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So that was Vice Admiral Ghormade, former Chief, Vice Chief of the Naval Staff, telling us uh, the significance of uh, the two approvals that have been given by the Cabinet Committee on Security and what it means for the larger region. Uh, interoperability, uh, better uh, combat efficiency, all that. So do keep watching Strat News Global. And uh, of course, send us your feedback. Our social media platforms are well known to you. So do uh, see our tweets, our uh, vi videos, and uh, let us know what we can do more on and do better. For the time being, it's goodbye.